Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, at the moment, we've just got under 300 people that are online. Thank you so much for joining us. This uh, webinar by Land Lord Zone, uh, part of the Hamilton Fraser Group, is what is the future of land lording in the UK? Um, with myself, I'm going to be the host. Uh, we have, as Nigel Lewis says, the beasts of buy to let, uh, but you don't look like beasts, guys. You look gorgeous. Okay. I think Ben's uh, got his beard. Ben's got his beard on. Ben's got a beard. <laughs> Ben's in France. Uh, I don't know if he's doing quarantine over there. John looked like there's a sunshine out in Scotland, which might be a first. And Eddie <laughs> is down in the Isle of Wight. Is that yes, right? Eddie? I am. I am. In, in the hotel yeah. room, as you can see. In the hotel room. And I uh, I'm on audio, which might be a, a blessing in disguise because my camera doesn't work. But uh, I, just a, a, a just a, an announcement. Some of the Wi-Fi might be on lag uh, to uh, all our attendees. So just bear with us. This uh, session is going to be uh, it's going to be a debate. It's going to you know, we've got we've worked out. We've got almost 100 years experience uh, on this webinar uh, in the private rental sector. We're all landlords ourselves, so we're all part of organisations that specialise in the private rental sector. And our key landlords, uh, our key clients are landlords and letting agents. OK, uh, there is a question uh, box for anyone that wants to pass a question. Um, so let me, uh, without further ado, let me introduce you to John Blackwood. He is the CEO of SALS, the Scottish Association of Landlords. John, do you, do you want to just introduce yourself to the attendees, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, thanks for inviting us, Paul. It's great to be part of this session this evening. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm Chief Executive of the Scottish Association of Landlords, and I guess that is what it says on the tin. We are the national landlord organisation for landlords in Scotland. So uh, we've been running for nearly 20 years now. Uh, so we've got quite a considerable experience. And like most landlord organisations, we are landlords ourselves, uh, operating for other landlords and letting agents. So we are here in Scotland very much supporting the sector and campaigning for what we need in a lettings business. That's right. And then just, just on numbers in Scotland, there, there's about 370,000 households in the private rental sector, which has trebled since 2000. That's fair enough to say. How many landlords yep, are there? That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's, and it's continuing to go up lords that we have in Scotland uh, just to give yeah. you an idea of the, uh, sorry about 250,000 landlords and it's about 340 I think households I think that's what we're looking at at today's figures so it's a substantial sum when it comes to the housing stock in Scotland. Most definitely thank you John I think your your Wi-Fi is just breaking in and breaking, breaking, out, breaking out a little bit uh, and right. Eddie Hooker Eddie Hooker CEO of Hamilton Fraser and my deposits introduce yourself please. Hi Paul, uh, hi everybody. Again, thank you for uh, for inviting us on. So Hamilton Fraser, uh, we are um, uh, suppliers to the private rented sector uh, with insurance, deposit protection, redress, complaint management. We've got about, um, or our customers are about 400,000 landlords across all of our different brands uh, and something like 14,000 letting agents um, that also work with us. Um, our brands include, as you said, Paul, My Deposits, it's the Property Redress Scheme for Letting Agents, uh, Client Money Protect, Total Landlord Insurance, and our um, uh, or, or, or Deposit Replacement Scheme, uh, OM, as well. So, um, yeah, I've been going since 1996. Uh, based down in uh, Hertfordshire um, and um, yeah been working uh, with the private sector uh, private and private residential sector since then so um, yeah yeah been interesting uh, it's been an interesting 20 odd years but uh, never seen anything like what we are experiencing in the private rented sector uh, in the last few years and what is likely to be happening in the future so delighted to be amongst these two heavyweights of the uh, the private rented sector as well, so um, thank you, thank you, lovely. Really. No thank worries. You. They're, not they're not heavy weights. They haven't been eating too much in <laughs> lockdown. I can guarantee you. But Eddie, Eddie, you have such an empire, such an empire at Hamilton Fraser. You forgot other brands. You forgot the brand that purchased my company called Land <laughs> yeah, Action. What's, 
yeah, Paul, yeah, I'm so sorry. Um, obviously, landlord, uh, la landlord action, and of course, we own landlord zone as well. Okay. But um, yeah, I mean, we, we try and do anything that we can do to help letting agents and landlords, and of course, yeah. tenants as well. We've got over a million yeah. tenants on the books as well. So um, yeah, no, just really, really interesting. Yeah, but the, the empire hopefully continues to, uh, to flourish. Yeah, and the main thing is we, we look to service and educate those landlords. And last yeah. but not least, Ben, who um, is sitting in his, in his chateau uh, in, in France uh, with, with a very lovely trim beard. Ben, introduce yourself, please, to our audience. Uh, I wouldn't take that. Ben. Thank you for that delightful that. introduction, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get my own back. I, I'm, I'm absolutely sweating like a pig here. It's particularly warm. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, Ben Beadle, Chief Executive of the NRLA. Um, as uh, a number of you will, will have seen, uh, we're far newer than uh, my uh, uh, friend John's organisation, uh, but we have a, a tremendous legacy uh, that we've taken on from the RLA and the NLA. Uh, and the last few months I've been uh, welding that together, uh, releasing websites and uh, trying to undo some of the mess uh, that, that COVID uh, has, has, has brought about. Uh, I've the private rented sector. I've, I've only ever worked in the private rented sector. It's, it's all I know. I think the phrase goes. Um, uh, and landlord. So yeah, everything that we're talking about today uh, doesn't just the, RLA, the NRLA and its customers, uh, but it affects me uh, personally. So there we. Go. Thank you, Ben. And uh, more importantly, I think uh, you might just need to possibly call in your phone because there is a bit of a lag. So uh, I just thought I'd let you know, just because you cut in and cut out, uh, Ben. But uh, yeah, thank you for the introductions. I mean, all we do is naturally service landlords uh, in one way or another, uh, helping them uh, guide through being a landlord. And, uh, you know, there's always been challenging times. And I think this is unprecedented. I've, you know, I've been helping landlords for almost 30 years and issued my first possession claim in 1991 and worked in recessions. And, we are literally in something that I, is so unprecedented. Uh, we don't know where we're going. It's just, it really, really is. Uh, what I wanted to do, just, uh, just, I wanted to give just a bit, of, a little bit of history with regard to the, the private rental sector and how it all changed and how there was investment. Because I mean, obviously, uh, in, in England, we had the 1998, 1988 Housing Act, which really invented the assured uh, short-hold tenancies which meant that uh, uh, tenants could stay for six months, 12 months, rather than the old rent protected tenancies where tenants would stay longer. And by changing uh, those laws, uh, that obviously attracted investment and attracted landlords into the industry. And really there was a, I, th I think really fair enough to say maybe from 2002, 2003, there was a massive uh, boom really with regard to, uh, with regard to buy to let and investment into properties. Um, uh, John, just just coming to you. Um, I mean, are we are we you know I've, I've done some talks up in Scotland. We go back a, a long way. Um, how uh, you've you've started obviously you know and you've been part of uh, obviously South for for many many years, twenty years. How have you seen? I mean, we will come into more details. But how have you seen things change so much in Scotland? And we're going to talk about obviously what's happening now in COVID a little bit later on. But how have you seen things change so much in the last twenty years? Well, I think, first of all, I think our, our history is very similar because we had a, a Housing Act in 1988 as well, and that introduced for us the short assured tenancy, which is the Scottish yeah. equivalent to the short hold. So the history is very, very similar. And like here, we had the the boom when the buy to let market really took off. So, and as a landlord from the mid 90s, you know, I've really seen obviously the market change dramatically. So. It was very small beer a way back then. And from that time, it's really developed into certainly a very substantial sector. And I hope as well become more professionalized, which is something we've been advocating for over that time as well too. But to say a way at the big I remember starting off and the only piece of legislation you needed to think about was gas safety legislation. That's yeah. all that existed. So, mm. and when you think where we are now and how dramatically different it is, and we are different again here in Scotland. So, so it's very changed days. And for many landlords, that's been a struggle. And for some, it's just been too much as well too. 
Yeah, and I, I think I think those, those struggles are the same, obviously, here. I mean, obviously, you know, we know the vast majority of landlords in Scotland and in England and in Wales are the landlords that got ones and twos, and they do need major assistance with regard to landlord associations like yourself and uh, and the guidance, the hand-holding, the advice, you know, the updates and so forth. Eddie, I just want to come on to you. Uh, mm. but, uh, you know, the, the game changer, and I, 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 someone that has been in the court system and, and acting for landlords, and I became a landlord after I set up Landlord Action, uh, you know, I thought the legislation change in 2007 of the Deposit Protection Scheme was actually one of, most probably one of the best things that ever happened to the industry because I used to go to court for landlords going after tenants in loads of spurious debt recovery claims, you know, silly little debt recovery claims. And I think this, the, the, you know, and I think also landlords still forget that actually the deposit is the tenant's deposit. Talk us through just, just, just briefly about how that came about, how, you know, and obviously, you know, we partnered up at the time with the National Landlords Association, how it came about and that first bit of legislation, how it changed uh, the mapping of, of buy to let and the private rental sector when the deposit scheme came in. Yeah, so, you yeah, know, thanks, Paul. Um, I mean, again, like John, um, we started working in the private rent rented sector back in the mid 90s. I mean, I think the word buy to let didn't even exist in the mid 90s. It wasn't, as you say, until the early 2000s that um, um, uh, the term buy to let really took hold across the UK. And then you had all of these you had all the landlords, what I call the accidental or investment landlords, obviously piling in to the sector. I mean, that was partly also because of government policy, uh, consistent government policy by all colours of the uh, of the rainbow that were pulling away from social housing um, and relying. I'm not sure deliberately, but I think uh, wandering blindfold into allowing the private rented sector really to be yeah. the main sector of housing other than uh, owner occupied. So people that generally couldn't afford properties would then rent. But in the past, obviously, the councils would be providing housing. That was no longer. So the private landlord uh, really came to, a, to the fore. Um, I mean, I started working with the, the Small Landlords Association back then. That was before the National Landlords Association, which they then became. But um, you are right. I think in the early to mid 2000s, I think the government started to recognise that, that the sector was, I mean, I don't know, Ben, if this is the right terminology. It was a little bit out of control, really. It was burgeoning. If you think about the numbers over the last 15 years, John, you have the same in, in Scotland. I mean, that they've they've exponentially increased. And um, the 2000 and um, I think it was a 2004 amendment to the Housing Act, which then brought in tenancy deposit protection. I think that was really brought in because I, I think there was a lack of there was an ignorance of landlords. There was a lack of education about so many different uh, um, areas of landlording. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Landlords, they, that is a terminology, I'm not overly keen on the word landlord. I mean, I know it's yeah. enshrined in law and everything, but- mm -hmm. Maybe it's but, a bit dated landlord, the word. Yeah. yeah, people were coming into the industry, not really understanding, as John said, there was really only gas, gas safety around, um, where the relationship between the landlord and the tenant was quite strained up until that point. Um, and I think what the, uh, the, the, the legislation which brought in tenancy deposit protection did wasn't just about the deposit and uh, the fact that it's yeah. the tenant's money. Um, it was all about the communication between the landlord and the tenant. Mm. It was mm. very much a consumer driven Piece and, of and, and Ed, on, on that point, on that point, because I want to come to Ben, I'm going to ask you, Ben, about mm. tax, uh, which everyone loves about tax and why they brought Section 24 in. But Eddie, I, I mean, obviously, you know, if you just talk about some of the numbers that my deposits have done, I, I don't think people understand of how much, uh, you know, my deposits protect and how many adjudications we've got and how many calls we've got. I mean, just throw some numbers that we, you know, we do on a yearly basis. I mean, bear in mind, we've, you've been running the scheme now for, what, 13 years? Yeah, so, I mean, we, we can talk about my deposits. Of course, there are three tenancy deposit schemes yeah. in, uh, in England and Wales. There are three um, uh, uh, tenancy deposit schemes in Scotland. 
Um, but my deposits, for example, since 2007, we've protected over three and a half million deposits. Uh, we've dealt with something like 80,000 individual disputes. Uh, wow. Currently, we, uh, we um, protect around about a billion pounds worth of client money, yeah. or tenants' money uh, in mm. England. Um, uh, when you add all the TDP schemes up, yeah. it's, about, it's somewhere in the region of, uh, of uh, well over three million pounds i think it's closer to four billion pounds worth of money right. in scotland the three schemes are holding in excess of probably 200 million pounds worth of money these are big big numbers it's big, it's big money and i think i think the government uh, uh, realize uh, and of course the mindset is to the uh, landlords it's not your money it's the tenants money uh, so that was the that was really the, the, the first starting point I think of obviously they're becoming some sort of legislation uh, and obviously improving uh, obviously the experience and obviously the tenancy but I want to come on to another major factor that happened Ben uh, and you know whether it's it's and I, I know it has led to some landlords uh, decreasing their portfolio, some landlords selling and so forth, was uh, of the, obviously the introduction of Section 24 and obviously the abolishment of interest mortgage relief. How has that yeah. really affected landlords, uh, Ben, with regard to, and the feedback you've had from your members, of uh, how bad was that, uh, that impact and why did the government bring it in? Well, I mean, it's been dreadful, um, frankly. Uh, I call this my Section 24 beard. You can see the grey coming through. And I suspect that, um, you know, there are a lot of landlords in, in my position, frankly. Um, to, to dial back a little bit to some of the things that, uh, that Ed was talking about, I think that what we what we tdp was the first sort of movement in terms of wanting to control landlord behavior or change landlord behavior yeah. and i think it's been successful at that i think i think it probably was a deliberate move uh, on the part of the government to let landlords do the the legwork and provide homes to people um uh, uh, as well as selling off uh, council houses and not replacing them and mm. and what we what we are now seeing back to section 24 is obviously a cooling of uh of the private rented sector uh you know things are getting a little bit hot uh, uh according to government i don't uh, necessarily see it myself um yeah. and they're obviously wanting to to temper some of the landlord's behavior and and uh and and make it less attractive for the private rented sector landlord to to invest because section 24 uh, if you're not careful um, you can end up uh, a property can end up costing you uh, far more uh, to to run than the profit you get. Effectively, it's it's a it's a, a tax on revenue, um, and that's why landlords have to be really really careful, uh, particularly first time landlords thinking about investing and and their tax position because it's it's hit a lot of landlords hard. Yeah, yeah, uh, but it's frightening, it's frightening landlords away, Ben. Though, isn't it? At a time when uh, there is a, all governments have consistently failed uh, to even get anywhere near their housing, their house building quotas, both north of the border and south of the border. And um, what, what, uh, what annoys or upsets me is that the, this constant attack on landlords, and I call it an attack on landlords because it's making landlording feel so unattractive but where are the tenants? Where are the tenants going to live? And that's where I worry. And it's creating a rent bubble as well, which um, back in the day, I mean, over the last 10, 15 years, rents have doubled almost in real terms. So and and, have and you the, seen the that? Yeah, sorry, Ben, go on. Yeah. I was just going to say the annoying thing about that is then you, you then start to have ridiculous conversations about rent control. Whereas, you know, the fundamental point is around the supply. And actually, we've seen during COVID-19 that rents have sorted themselves out. You know, landlords have done the right thing. They've sought not to put up rents, et cetera, et cetera. That's sorted through into the figures. But of course, you know, you, you tighten the, uh, the, 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 the purse strings. It was a deliberate move by Osborne 
to, to squeeze more la- uh, more money out of landlords. Uh, and that obviously has an impact on supply. If it has an impact on supply, it has an impact on affordability. And that's, you know, that's the, the very issue that this government you know, really wants to sort. Yeah, definitely. I, mean, I think what, what I want to get into now, 100%, what I want to get into now, because this is about this, this whole webinar and you know, Ben, we've done loads of webinars. I'm, you know, Ed, you know, I've done something like 35 webinars in lockdown. All right? That's why I'm not showing you my picture because uh, uh, my, my beard's a lot longer than your beard, Ben. Um, <laughs> is, is with regard to landlords, uh, and it's the same north of the border, and actually we are following suit of north of the border. It's quite clear the government have said, and there's loads of things on the horizon, and I want the, I want this webinar to be about the future, where we're at now, covid and then we're going to talk about you know going forward and you know look there's a lot of newbie landlords on here a lot of landlords that have got portfolios and and they're looking for us to give some sort of advice and how they diversify how they business plan and so forth but it's quite clear this is going to be a regulated industry we're on that way we're not as heavily regulated like sweden and like germany but we're going that way there's no two ways about that and obviously we know the government like institutional investment of built to rent and corporate landlords and they don't like the one and two landlords i mean we still get calls on our landlord action advice line and you'll have the same on your advice line and where landlords still haven't protected the deposit in the deposit scheme you know and we're talking about a deposit yeah, scheme that came in 13 years ago you know so uh, what how, with regard to legislation i'm just going to start with you john okay i mean where you are they've talked about rent controls you've got landlord registration we haven't got that there i mean and then of course you know, we're going to talk about, you know, we are going to talk about the courts and uh, Ben, you might have some updated news in that and the, the challenges so forth. But with regard to the legislation and with regard to compliance and uh, education, how have, you, how have Scottish landlords, Ben, uh, uh, sorry, uh, John, dealt with that and how are they embracing that and how are you, how's it affecting the market? Well, I think overall it's been difficult for us all uh, throughout the whole of the UK, wherever you are. Uh, but, you know, Eddie was picking up on a very important point earlier that there's great pressure in the private rented sector to provide accommodation. And that's for one reason, one reason only, the lack of affordable social housing. Yeah. And, and really what the governments north and south of the border, anywhere in the UK, what they all need to address is how do we increase the supply of social housing? because that will take the pressure off the private rented sector. You yeah. know, we are being forced to house some of the most vulnerable people in society. Yeah. And arguably, we are not the right people to providing that accommodation. Yeah. Uh, right, but we're yeah. kind of being shoehorned into that position, which wasn't the case, shall we say, as much 20 years ago. Yeah. So what the governments are expecting of the private rented sector now is very different to what it was before. And that's becoming harder for us to operate within, partly because we don't have the skills and expertise to deal with some of the the very complex issues with these tenants. But also, you know, ultimately we're in this as investors. That's why we're landlords. And we have to see that uh, it shouldn't be something that's easy and we don't need to think about. Uh, We have responsibilities as landlords, but, but we have to see it's worthwhile. And I'm certainly hearing a lot from landlords here in Scotland and elsewhere that actually, do you know what? This isn't worthwhile doing anymore. Yeah. My concern is if more and more people, or landlords, leave the sector, what's going to happen? Where's that housing going to go? So is there going to be a yeah. demise in the private rented sector? And people yeah. need somewhere to live. And governments yeah. actually, rather than hitting us over the head with a stick, as they all they need to be encouraging us to invest, to provide more housing. I agree, John. I was I was looking at this. The um, was talking once about we've got different other, legislation in Scotland. Yeah, uh, the, 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 the not, same. if we're not careful, we the 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 private rented sector will become uh, a class system where mm. landlords will only be looking for those tenants that a can afford the rent and are and are the type of tenant that um, is relatively transient. I, I worry, and COVID has shown this over the last um, the last six, seven months, is what is going to happen to tenants when they can't afford to pay the rent, and landlords have been fantastic, and I get that, and I, I, I welcome that, but when the unemployment numbers do start going up, and landlords then are looking 
for those tenants that actually have got jobs and can afford those rents? And what will happen to those vulnerable people that um, have lost, and it could be you and I that lose, jo lose our job, yeah. it's not anyone. That COVID wasn't, COVID didn't pick just on one sector of the population. So but can I just bring that back? Can I just bring that back, Ed? I mean, I, th I think what I want to what I want to get from you guys, okay? Because you are at the fore of this, is there is much more legislation. And Ben uh, and John, you hit the nail on the head because there's a that landlording has changed from 10, 15 years ago. I, I've got a very, very good friend of mine who has become a really good friend of mine. He was my one of my first landlords at Landlord Action when I started to, in 2000. He's got 160 properties. And he actually decided we had a focus group and he does. We had a, I, we had a, we have a lot of focus groups, don't we? Ed, around our boardroom yeah. table with landlords, letting agents, even starting doing it with tenants. And he actually said from that focus group, I realized I've, I've got to get out. The game has changed because, yes, there's non-payment around. No one knew about COVID. Yes, there's the tax. There's there's obviously funding or maintenance. But the, 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 the raft of legislation now. And that and ignorance is not a defence when it goes to court, and we all see it, and that's why we've got advice lines and stuff. Is the burdening legislation, and you guys are stakeholders, you speak to the government, uh, and I'll put this to you, Ben, is this just totally putting off landlords because they're not prepared, they want to self-manage, when they shouldn't really self-manage, they should be using a letting agent? I think it's, it's a, 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 a a really difficult conundrum. I mean, you know, like John, uh, I, there isn't a great deal of difference north and south of the border in terms of how landlords are either treated or perceived. I do think the direction of travel uh, is one towards greater regulation. Um, but um, certainly in my conversations with governments, uh, they are acutely aware uh, and always ask me about landlord confidence. So we run a confidence index. Um, uh, and, you know, uh, spoiler alert, uh, it's pretty bloody low. Um, uh, and, you know, we have this conver conversation, um, uh, you know, time, time and time again. And I think the, you know, the issue is the government is actually really reliant on individual landlords and it can only push them too far. Uh, or yeah, so they, far, they can only, take, they can only um, take so much, can't they, Ben? You're absolutely right. And I do think you know, that will give rise to some landlords thinking about their position and thinking, actually, you know, if I stick this money uh, uh, in, uh, you know, some, somewhere else or do, do something else with it, I, you know, I may not make as much, but I, I, I may have, uh, you know, I may get my life back. You know, I may have uh, far less hassle and far less mm. risk. And, you know, I do recognise that as being a, 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 an issue. I think, yeah. um, uh, Paul, you know, you, you spoke about the bill to rent landlords. Um, yeah. You know, that I, I, you know, I, as you know, I used to do quite a lot, bit of work with bill to rent yeah. landlords. And, and those numbers haven't taken off massively. And, mm -hmm. you know, whilst the government may well favour dealing with a big corporate uh, uh, landlord over and above, um, you know, people with one or two properties, the reality is that that's going to take several decades to filter through into any significant yeah. numbers. So, yeah. you know, whether you like it or not, landlords are here for the long haul um, yes. uh, if they choose to be. And the government has to be really careful how it treats them. I, I totally and agree. Paul, Paul, can I add into Paul, that as well? That yeah, go on, John. What's interesting here in Scotland, we have landlord registration. So we have a database yes. of landlords uh, that the government or local authorities actually uh, administer. And what is interesting for years when I'm talking to the politicians here in Scotland, I keep saying, you know what, you can only push people so far before some of these landlords just say enough is enough, I'm going. And I remember one MSP turning around laughing uh, one day when I mentioned that to him and he said, you know, John, I've known you for all these years now and you keep saying that, but see these landlord registration statistics, these numbers keep growing and growing. So there is a mounting amount of landlords coming into the sector. And what's interesting about that is when you really delve into that, and it's only anecdotal at this stage, but what we're finding is the new landlords coming in are what we would have called in the olden days those accidental landlords. So the people who didn't go out to intentionally invest in the sector, they've naturally inherited property. So when they inherit that property, they're thinking, well, what do I do with it? Do I sell? 
do I keep it? And they tend to be yeah. erring still to this day towards yeah. keeping it. And then yeah. even with my, my agent hat on, uh, when I'm speaking to new landlords too, and they ask you that great question, tell me everything I need to know as a landlord. And it's like, well, yeah. how long have you got? You know, and uh, <laughs> you've got a whole list and you think, do you well, want to grow, do you want to grow a beard like Ben? Yeah, and if this doesn't fright, frighten you off, then I don't know what. But actually, interestingly, it doesn't frighten them off. Yes, of course. Mate. Demand is still strong. Think, yeah. What, what I've learned I... is over the years, yeah. landlords have changed. You know, and our, what you and I were used to 20 years ago, uh, and that's what we expect the sector to be. More but than also landlords. The, ten the tenants change as well. Um, but I, let me just move the, Let me just move this on, Doug, because we've got loads to get on. I've got loads of questions as well, and we are going to run out of time, and we might go over, and hopefully if you're not going to shoot off, we might, you know, we, we might run this uh, maybe just a little bit over. I want to just touch on the dreaded C word, all right? And it's not what you think. It's actually COVID, okay? <laughs> so what I want to do is I want to uh, – I just want to touch on COVID – how it's affecting. I want to talk about the eviction bans. You know, I want to talk about where we're at. How how can landlords get over these hurdles? What can they do? We've heard some amazing stories, and we've partnered up with you at the NRLA. You know, uh, talking about the good and the great of landlords doing great things. But but we know that great landlord stories uh, and and here was you know and great good deeds doesn't sell newspapers. But we try and promote that obviously on Landlord Zone. Uh, can I just come to you, Ed, uh, just, uh, you know, uh, and you're a landlord as well with regard to COVID-19, you, you know, you're running a service business and you run all these different uh, businesses with regard, uh, you know, to, to landlords. The biggest worry, obviously, for landlords is non-payment of rent. But I, I said week two, the commercial property market will be affected far worse than the resi, and it, and it has. How do landlords, fab and we're gonna, I want to get an answer from all of you guys before we're going to start talking about positive stuff and about you know what we see in the future. Landlords, how do they deal with things? How do agents deal with things as well, possibly? But also landlords, how do they get through this difficult period, Ed? Can you, well, I think, I think the, the, the chat will agree. It's about communication. Look, no one wants um, tenancy voids. Landlords, that's their biggest fear. Um, obviously what COVID has done is created that void with the tenants still being in there because in a lot of cases, rents um, haven't been paid or have been uh, deferred. Um, at the beginning uh, of the crisis, obviously everything came to a, to a stop, um, but the government reopened the property market relatively quickly. Let's be given some credit on this. So really it was... Um, beginning of June that the, um, um, the, the government allowed uh, letting agents, state agents to, to come back in to the market. That started, um, uh, uh, started things moving again. Um, the rent guarantee market obviously collapsed completely. So you heard uh, horror stories of insurers shutting their doors uh, for rent new rent guarantee policies or renewing existing rent guarantees. But then out of that, you had the mediation situation, which um, companies like mine, the Property Redress Scheme, set up a, uh, a mediation uh, service. Uh, I think TBS did the same, the Tenancy Deposit Scheme did the same, one or two others. And it was all about, uh, uh, all about communication and talking and listening to your tenant and I think Ben mentioned this right at the beginning you know tenants wanted to didn't no one wants to knock their landlord I wouldn't have thought there's most tenants are decent human beings like us all and they want a home over their head they're no different than anyone else in an owner-occupied uh, uh, house they've got families kids um, commitments mm and everything else and no one wants to get into debt and the landlord community on the whole stood up and worked with the tenant community to uh, to get through this so uh, I, I think um, I think ultimately that there, there has been a shock we're back on to track obviously you've now got the stamp duty issue with estate agents where uh, they're all seeing booms at the moment. The property market is booming at the moment. We're, we're going to touch on that in a minute, Ben. We're going to touch on that in a minute, Ed, with I, regard to the stamp. I would yeah. say, I would say um, my fear, and I said this a moment ago, is not now. 
my fear is when the uh, furlough scheme ends uh, towards the end of the year. A lot of tenants, I don't have the facts, I wish I had the numbers, but a lot of tenants work in the hospitality, the entertainment industry. There's a lot of uh, short term or part time work in that area yeah. in, in the retail markets and the service industries. And uh, I worry that we are about to see a major catastrophe unfold uh, um, uh, in front of us. I hope not, but we can yeah. touch on that okay. in, in the future. But yeah, yeah. we're okay. trying. It's going to be tough. And obviously, you know, I know I will say that Q1 next year will be a true indicator. And you're right. Uh, and, you know, I, I've got an article coming out in the Telegraph. We had one today, didn't we, in the eye, uh, Ben, we did a comment on that. You've been involved with the judicial working group. Obviously, the eviction ban uh, got suspended another two months until the end of August. Uh, you might have news off the press. You don't know that yet. Uh, Share it with us, Ben. Uh, tell us where we're at. How yeah. are landlords opening at the NRLA, not getting their rent? Um, so, um, well, I, I think you know, look, landlords have definitely played their uh, part when it comes to COVID-19. Uh, I'm really, really clear about that. And hopefully, you know, you guys have seen a lot of the stuff that we put out that have been really yeah. talking landlords up. Um, we had some research out in, in the past couple of weeks that, you know, we don't do fear. We, we don't do research based on, you know, what you fear. We, we do research based on what's happening. Uh, and our research uh, or an independent survey of tenants shows that 95 percent of tenants are able to pay as normal or with agreements with their landlords. So let's let's put this into perspective. I think uh, yes, obviously, you know, it, it, the worst is still to come. Um, uh, I think the thing that that I find massively frustrating, um, and it's sort of linked to the conversation around how landlords are viewed and treated, uh, that you know the, the landlords are expected to uh, you know house people and you know pick up the slack where the government has failed, uh, and bugger me, you know they're now expected to you know carry the debt of others uh you know they're meant to suck up uh not being able to get uh, uh possession of their property um uh and you know oh you've broken up on us oh can you hear us from covid19 oh, we missed that last um, bit then. sorry you broke up on that, that last bit because the connection I know sorry, I was, I was, some, of the, some of the people are struggling a little bit on sound can you repeat that Sure. I, I, I was getting slightly hysterical. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I, I, was, I was just saying. <laughs> and you are a landlord. Uh, that, you can do that. I know. You've got that disease landlord uh, wage. Give him an ibuprofen uh, now. Uh, uh, <laughs> God, I need something stronger than that. I, th I, think, okay. I think the point is that we're expecting uh, announcements tomorrow from the working group. There's a lot of uh, chatter online at the moment around the, um, the eviction ban and what that looks like. Um, you know, uh, I think for me, landlords cannot be expected to carry the can. It's right that landlords do the right thing at the height of the virus. Um, but I'm sorry, you know, um, uh, we, we can't carry the can forever. Uh, and so if the government doesn't lift uh, the stay on possessions, uh, then I shall let my uh, legal counsel, uh, David Smith, uh, loose on them. Uh, and and see what the courts have to stay on, say on it, because as you well know, Paul, there are landlords who, through no fault of their own, have got very very significant debts because yeah. people haven't uh, uh, kept with their obligations. It's the landlords and it's in the court system with COVID. Yeah, it's the landlords. I mean, Absolutely. we we got one one case. I mean, I, I want to try. I'm I'm so conscious of time, but if if they stay it, I mean, this is a perfect link to you, John. Obviously, because we know Scotland had to stay until the end of March. Uh, and we know with Wells, they had a six month notice. But of course, Wells brought in tenant, um, obviously tenant loans. Uh, but I mean, if you know, we, we've been serving all the reactivation notices at Landlord Action. We've got 555 cases or something. We've, I mean, I've been in the office today. There's been reactivation notices going out. If the government now turn around and say we're staying for another two months. I mean, that, I just can't believe that will happen. But I mean, that comes to you, John. How have landlords in Scotland on the announcement two, three weeks ago when Nicola Sturgeon said you can't evict a tenant all the all, all, all the, the stays until March? How can landlords in Scotland cope? We're not getting their rent. It's slightly different. We don't have a ban on eviction.
she can still be evicted in Scotland. That can happen. It's just the, the notice period you need to give is, say, for yeah. rent arrears is six months. So Perfect. whereas that was 28 days before, so that's now six months. So that's that's the problem. That's the issue. And, you know, what was more soul destroying about it is that there's lots of us been working with the government as stakeholders to to really look at finding positive solutions and and helping work with tenants the best way we can. And of course, the first minister stood up in parliament and made that announcement completely unknown to the Scottish government. I had a, a, a meeting an hour later and the civil service didn't know anything about it. Uh, yeah. And likewise, the housing minister. So they're very much in a position where they're saying, yes, we want to protect tenants. We don't want anybody to be homeless. And that I can understand. But you know what? We as landlords, as private individuals, cannot be expected to have someone living in our properties for over a year without getting a penny in rent. That's just not acceptable. If the government doesn't want anybody to be evicted, then the government needs to pay everybody's rent. It's as simple as that. And which it'll be interesting to see how they respond to that. We're talking about in Wales, isn't it, with the... Um... I know it's not exactly paying it, but it, in Wales, I mean, I don't think they've put half as much money as they probably need. They've put eight million quid into uh, into the the loan system, which I think the the yeah. um, the community banks are are are, um, are dealing with that. But what's good about that scheme is it's going directly to the landlord rather to the tenant. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what Can we I have in guys? Scotland is we've got a landlord yeah. loan scheme that exists in Scotland as well too. But all of yeah, these things are just short term. Sorry, only for one land. Landlord's got one property. No, it's up to five properties. Oh, it's up to five. So okay. It's, which mm. the majority of the, we're looking at ninety five yeah. percent of landlords okay. have less yeah, than, yeah. than than five properties. So <laughs> that's what came up with that figure. But the people yeah. who certainly we're aware of that's really affected are not those in that category. So they are yeah. larger landlords who can't get any of the other government scheme support. Yeah. Uh, and they're really stuck. OK, I'm going to ask you guys a question and then I'm going to move on because we are talking about the future, not the present, not the past. Right. Because we, I, I, But I wanted to map this out. And obviously you guys are at the coalface of speaking with the government. I've got so many questions here and we're not going to be able to go through them. But what we will do to everyone that's listening, we've got 357 people online now. Uh, we will come back and answer all your questions and the guys will make themselves available. Um, uh, as hopefully to be able to help uh, answer these questions via obviously landlord zone. I'm going to ask you this question, right? We've got eviction bans, we've got a longer notice periods, right? Everyone's forgetting. I mean, obviously, we've been involved, I've been heavily involved. We talked about the banning of Section 21, that's in the distance, okay? You know, and that's been pushed back, and that was good work by the NRLA and what Ben did. Uh, and obviously, we talked about housing courts. We don't know how the court's going to deal with. We know about the first year tribunal, which has been a bit of a mess to say the least, uh, John, hasn't it? Because it's been offered for free and there's been backlog. I'm going to ask you one question very quickly. You tell me yes or no, okay? After this pandemic and in the middle of next year, uh, and we don't know how long it's going to take to evict tenants, there could be further bans. Is there going to be a lot of landlords that but that may have been in the game for a while, John, that will think enough is enough and they're going to get out? Yes or no? Yeah. Yep. Eddie? Not sure. Not sure. Ben? I, I, I'm, I'm hesitating to say yes, but I think it depends on how the government responds on evictions, on paying down debt and managing the rest of the situation. And it's it's one of our surveys said, said mm. that um, uh, landlords were sitting on the fence in terms of how the government have responded and waiting. Um, but I think if they don't get it right, I think it will cause uh, landlords to exit. That's a very but good answer. I think answer. what we have to remember, Paul, is that yeah. landlords are cautious investors. That's the very nature of our game. That's why yeah. we invest in bricks and mortar. So we're yeah. cautious about it. And I think anything that rocks that boat of confidence and makes us think, hang on a second, is this really what I need to be doing or what I want to be doing uh, is, is actually bad news. And I, I'm hearing the nervousness from landlords now. So you're saying, what about in a year's time? Will we still have a private rented sector? Of course we will. Will we see a, yeah. still see a growing sector? Of course we will. But my concern is some of the people who are in it just now, well, yeah. after all the years of experience they've been building up as a good landlord, 
operating yeah. well in the sector, they might think, yeah. do you know what, enough is enough. And yeah. it's a shame to lose a lot of that experience. That's what I'm yes. really worried about. I, I, I worry I worry that um, when those, can I call them good landlords, uh, exit the market, that void gets filled by uh, uneducated landlords. And yeah. um, I'm not sure how many people out of the 100 people we've got listening are not members of either the SAL or the NRLA. Um, yeah. But there is a yeah. lot of help out there for landlords yeah. at the moment. The obviously got the two guys here and their um, their organisations, which funnily enough, between you, between you is only a small fraction of the landlords and there's a lot of work to be done there. Um, yeah. There's companies like Hamilton Fraser and others that are there to help with um, education and help with the uh, services that will help being a landlord a much easier uh, uh, situation so we need to yeah. get the voice out there that that there is no need to panic and remember a lot of landlords are in for the longer haul and yes, we are course. going through unprecedented times i think ben is right john is right the government need to sit up and listen and take the sector a lot more seriously if it's going to treat the sector like a business then give it the breaks a business has you okay, can't i've got have... a challenge i've got yeah, a challenge sorry eddie on, the, on sorry? this point and this is i've yeah. got a challenge on this point this is really really apt and it, you know to have people that have been in the game a long time and understand it and you know i'm, I'm looking at some of these questions uh we are on a little bit of a cliff edge aren't we ben with regard to how do the government sit up and I think, you know, and I, you know, with the guy, the work that the NLA and the RLA have done and coming together and are clearly the voice that's been coming out. We need to get together and we've got to do some campaigning. There's been a lot of tenant groups recently doing loads of campaigning. But if there's no government support, you know, uh, the landlords, you know, landlords, I can tell you now, I mean, I, I was having a chat with someone in the office and, you know, a younger landlord are actually and landlords that were listening i speak to landlords they stop me in the street and they see the tv program he goes paul i don't like saying i'm a landlord i don't feel proud of being a landlord i think it's a little bit of a dirty word you know we should they but, do a great uh, job and we change that perception absolutely we do paul and you know that's definitely an area that the nrla and and you know with our our friends at sal and, and john and others uh, need need to work on uh, but yeah. you know have a look on twitter have a look on twitter tonight have a little look at you know some of the tweets about the eviction ban uh, uh and some of the nonsense that you get back on there you know yeah. that, that's going to be a a difficult um uh, nut to crack but the, yeah. the slight issue we have is that we have a far more entitled group of tenants than we have ever seen um yeah. uh and uh, 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 and i hate to say it uh, but it, it's 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 the truth. Uh, I'm proud to be a landlord. Uh, yes. I do a good job, and and the vast majority of landlords out there do do a good job. What this government needs yes. is a proper strategy uh, for yes. the private renting sector, okay. rather yeah, than yeah. a nip and a tuck and a whack a mole approach to policy. I know. Well, they, Definitely. Yeah, I know. They, they need to have a stable housing minister to begin yeah. with. I mean, how many have they had in the last ten years? No one, no about one can get. 10, under, I think. Yeah, no yeah, one about, can about get in the job long enough. I know. Okay, let, let me move this on because look, there is a bounce in the market. Stamp duty. Okay. I mean, I, I, I look at reports now, and actually, house prices are being uh, popped uh, are being propped up by the busiest month in ten years in August. Okay. The stamp duty has given everyone a bounce. Okay. Uh, you know, you speak to agents; they're mad busy. Okay, whether it's a false bounce or it's a temporary bounce, you know, so let's look forward. Let's try and be positive. I mean, obviously, I know, you know, we're now 10 minutes to the end of the webinar, but we've got to get stuff out and we've got to get landlords, you know, to show that we care and we're listening to them. And this is what's happening and everything that's happening uh, on, on the ground. But, you know, opportunities for landlords, you know, you're going to have landlords, newbie landlords here. You can have some sort of, you can have some landlords that want to grow their portfolio. OK, you're all landlords. OK, uh, you know, one landlord, uh, she's come, she said HMOs. This is Andy Emerson. HMOs, you're an HMO landlord. Buy or sell, Ben? Um, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't sell, but I wouldn't buy any more. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, that's just you. But what I'm saying is, 
opportunities, getting investments. You know, if you look at this, there could be landlords leaving the market. Yes, possibly. I speak to an investor. They say, well, look, we're going to wait for the job losses. I mean, that could be cynical, but we want to wait for the market to come down because obviously everything's overpriced. You know, mixing up your portfolio. You know, I see, uh, I think there will be a massive social uh, investment with regard to social housing because on the, on, on the back of what's happened in COVID-19. I say to landlords, do deals with councils on three and five year deals. The, te the councils being your direct tenants. Beforehand, landlords were a bit snob. There was snobbery. You know, we had about the DSS ban. So what I'm saying is investment opportunities. John, I would, you know, I'm a newbie landlord in Scotland. OK, what tips have you got for me to get on the uh, to get on the ladder and start being a landlord? Well, certainly, I still think it's a good thing to do. Um, but I, I would say the marketplace to get into is for those who are young single people. So I think we're looking at one bedroom, two bedroom properties. That's where I think the real growth market is potentially, as opposed to probably your HMOs. And we've got a different licensing regime here in Scotland than the rest of the UK. So that's where I'm seeing there's the great demand from tenants looking for accommodation. And that's where I would be looking to invest. And I'm still doing that. Good stuff. And Eddie, you know, you, you're going to buy more property. What are you going to do? You're going to change it. You're going to get serviced apartments. You know, Airbnb is going to come back and all those, you know, the, the, the short stay market, which got slaughtered. And we know guaranteed rent or rent to rent markets being affected. What would you what advice have you got for, for, for landlords out there with regard to building their portfolio and staying in the game? Be savvy. Start thinking about this as a business. Yeah, it's about making money. I know there's capital growth at the end of this for everybody, and that's why a lot of people do it. But um, you've got to start treating your portfolio and your investments and make your money work. So educate yourselves. Join a landlord association. I mean, what is it? 70 quid, guys, for one of your organisations? Yes, sure. It's, yeah. it's nothing but the, the, the host of information you can get. Get a good accountant. Yeah, get a good lawyer. Um, use companies right. that have been in the market that know what they're doing um, and can protect you properly and give you the right sort of service and advice that you need. Look, I still think landlording is a great opportunity. Um, of course, if an opportunity came up, I'd still grab it. Um, one landlord's loss is another landlord's gain. So I still think for the longer term, I think uh, landlording is a good area to be, a good industry to be in. But, but I caution people, don't think about making a quick buck. You're going to have to know what you are talking about and you are going to come under increasing pressure to treat the tenant as a consumer. I mean, the consumer law is widening every single year, you know, and um, they've got more rights than anyone. And quite rightly so at the end of the day. But yeah. um, I, I do think it's a good place. I would still encourage people to invest. But Thank you. understand okay. your game. It's not uh, it's not for the accidental landlord anymore. No, it's not. And actually, what, what our web, I'm going to come to you, Ben, in one second. You know, our landlord's own website, you know, we've had it a couple of years, haven't we, Ed? And we've got 135,000 yeah. members. You know, subscribe on the, on the website. It's totally free. We do breaking news every day. We've got an esteemed journalist, uh, Nigel Lewis, three to five breaking stories a day. We work with the guys at the mm -hmm. NRLA and we're going to do a lot more work with the guys at Sal, just giving loads of information. It's hard. We've got a forum. We have thousands of people a day going on our forum. It's hard, but you've got to put a price on your time. And if you're working full time, I, I the last two years and I train letting agents and landlords, I've never said so much of my time use a letting agent and full management. But Ben, I'm going to ask you this question. Where is landlording and buy to let going to be in five years time? I mean, it's like asking you what's the six numbers for Saturday's lottery, but see if you can answer it. Well, I, I don't know if the eviction ban is going to be lifted on Monday, uh, uh, let alone what's happening in five years' time. I know, I'm um, really putting you on it. I want, I want some positivity, I Ben. Come on. Well, I think, um, I think we will be operating in a far more regulated sector uh, than we're operating in today. Uh, but at the same time, I don't think landlords need to worry too much about that. You just need to be prepared for that direction of travel so i think it is 
it's inconceivable that there wouldn't be a, a register of landlords in some way, shape or form. I mean, my argument is that there is already with all of the various uh, stuff you've got to register and do. But uh, I think there will be uh, a registration of, of landlords. I think there will be landlord redress. I think the, the sector will be um, uh, a, a more heavily regulated sector. But I do think the, the rewards will still be there because as I said at the outset, you know the 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 buy to uh, the the build to rent merchants, um, uh, you know, are just not going to be able to accelerate that fast. Uh, and so the role of the landlord, whether the whether the landlord haters, uh, you know, like it or not, will still be there. Um, whether the the returns will be quite as much as they they once were, mm. question mark. Um, but I still think it will be a, a decent place to be. Yeah, good stuff. And then I'm going to put this to you, John. I mean, where do you see the market growing? We're talking about the UK. It's going to grow. You know, it's what, 21 percent at the moment. Where is where is buy to let going to be in five years time? Sorry, was that to me? The, the internet yeah, that was just to you, John. Yeah, where, where's, where's, where are we going to be in five years time with regard to the market? How is landlords going to change? How are the tenants change? I mean, is the, the market going to grow? I think certainly it's going to grow. And just as what Ben was saying, yeah, it's still a place to be. It's going to be a, a productive sector to be in going forward. Maybe the, the yields aren't going to be as good. Uh, but, you know, I think there's maybe another issue here. And I think that's where the sector needs to become more professional. Mm. And I think going back to a point that was made earlier, we need to be proud in the service we are providing. Uh, you know, I, I do joke that I think it's easier to admit you're an alcoholic than that you're a private landlord. Uh, and that's sad. And I'm, I'm not an alcoholic, by the way. Uh, so the whole point is, you know, we need well, to start. Maybe, John, webinar, well, maybe after this webinar, I might get on the salt. <laughs> we need to be proud and, and, and create an industry that, that actually is in control of its own future, which we yeah. aren't. We are very... Uh, at the mercy of, of governments, and, and I yes. think that needs to change. Definitely. And just quickly, uh, quickly, Eddie, and I've, got, and I've got one last question after this response to all of you. Go, go oh, on, Ed. Wait, what wait, Paul, um, let me. The other thing I was going to add from my from my uh, my soapbox earlier was that the tenant uh, is becoming more educated. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we've seen a massive rise in uh, online apps and um, services which the younger tenant remember students now they 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 they've been in their own accommodation for years and uh, they're now facing much longer in in terms of uh, renting but they're becoming a lot more educated and we've noticed that my deposits for example the dispute levels are starting to go up they're not getting better they get they're getting worse slowly but surely as the tenant challenges more and more of deductions and challenges the landlord on quality of property challenges landlords on doing the, the right thing letting agents are going through and uh, they're going to go through an absolute uh, change over the next yeah. two three yeah. years i don't suspect many as many letting agents to actually get through the next two years let alone the next five years as yeah. regulation bears down on them yeah. as well yeah. so it comes back but, to educate yourselves guys you can spend years building up your portfolio and it takes minutes for you to make a mistake with the burgeoning legislation out there and you can get yeah. caught so yeah. that's, can I, I add to that, Paul, just to, on what yeah. Eddie, Eddie was saying there, I think to go back to an earlier point he made about tenants are customers. I think we as yeah. an industry need to start to invest in our communication with Absolutely. and look at investing in, in developing that customer base. You 100%. know, as a proud landlord, I want to have tenants that are not just there for short term, yeah, I, I want them as long term yeah. tenants. And that I takes me... To a, yeah. a new stage in my business of developing yes. relationships, yes. I, I don't want to change tenancies uh, every don't couple avoid. of years. If that's I can right. keep someone for many years, I'm going yes. to invest in doing that. And that's you a different I, mindset. You know, I spoke to a gentleman today, a tenant. I get people contact me every day, Facebook, all different. I spoke to a tenant. He'd been in the property 18 years, and his landlord mm. needs to sell, and his landlord's offered him 10,000 pounds to leave, uh, and he's going to do something to do. And I'm giving him some advice. 
I have a motto, a happy tenant is a happy landlord, okay? And if yeah. we don't want void periods, it's really important. By the way, guys, I've put your email addresses at the bottom of the slides. You can see all our logos there as well. I'm going to ask you one last question because we have run out of time and it's been captivating. I, I apologise we haven't been able to answer all these questions. We will come back and answer all these questions. Uh, and just before we leave, you know, uh, one bit of advice, and I've been saying it for for years and years and years you know if any of you aren't a member you know join a landlord association because it is an utter no-brainer it's, it's tax deductible the advice that you get is, is is second to none even if you have a letting agent that fully manages at least you know what to ask them and how to ask them and that they're doing the job properly um, let me ask this question right uh start with you john the do's and the don'ts right i want one sentence answer landlords to do I think that would be it's going back to my point about investing in your customers get to know your customer much better and invest yeah. in your customer base lovely and don't uh don't i think you know if you want to be in it for the long term hold your nerve so don't give up too soon That's this a is great still a good advice to be in. yeah i love that a bit of advice eddie do's please uh same same um broken record i've been saying all seminar uh paul educate yourselves understand your business join the landlord association use a letting agent that's a member of a professional body get better become more savvy uh, as a landlord get better at what you do get better what yeah. you do and my don't my don't think you know it all yeah because yeah you don't we, we struggle to, to keep up with all of the raft of legislation coming through don't think it's simple put your property out to rent take your money in each month and everything's going to be hunky-dory it doesn't work that way at the moment it, yeah and you're right and my, my motto to that is i always use this motto uh you can't have steak every day of the week you've got sometimes you've got to have egg and chips <laughs> I don't mind egg and chips, Paul, to be fair with you. I know, I know, you love a bit of ketchup by the side. Anyway, Ben, <laughs> um, your, 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 your do's and your don'ts, please. I, I, I guess that's why you're hiding your webcam, Paul, is it? You're, you're tucking into steak and chips whilst we're all <laughs> starving, doing the legwork here. I, I, can't wait I, to I, eat, I yes. thought I'd get in a little, ben, thought I'd get in a little much. dig. I don't, no, but I don't hold on a second, you're, Ben, you're, you're eating frog's legs, so I don't know why you're having a pop at me. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I think I think my my dues uh, to drag us back to topic are to make sure uh, that that you you know in in any walk of life if you're if you're in business you need to make sure that you know what you're doing and, and do whatever you're doing better than either the opposition or what your customers are doing. Uh, so you know NRMA can help you with that. Sal can help you with that. We, we can all help you with that, but that, that's a fundamental point. And I think don't give up, uh, you know, don't let the bastards get you down because there's, uh, you know, there's a, a, a lot of challenge out there, uh, but I still think the rewards are going to be there. And sorry for my language, apologies. Oh, I didn't hear any bad language, but that was fine. I, I'm, you know, I'm a cockney, so a lot goes over my head. Um, Mark, <laughs> that's going to become the new strap it. line for the NRLA. I can see it now, so. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, actually, it's funny, actually, because they've now put my TV program at nine o'clock. It's coming out in a month's time. So I found out that there's going to be swearing uh, after Watershed on Channel 5. Um, I'm going to do my do's and don'ts, actually. Uh, my do's is, you know what? Engage yourself with other experienced landlords. There's no there's no substitute for experience. OK, uh, and also, also, you know, put a price on your time as landlords. OK, and don't, you know, uh, don't think that you can fully manage when you when actually you struggle to keep up with legislation and times, you know, actually use a letting agent. I mean, I know they're simple things, but you know what? I see landlords that will turn around and say, oh, I'm not going to pay an extra 3% full management. You'll get this, John, where they want only let only, you know, and they make classic mistakes, you know, if you. If, so, you know, I, I put a price in the times really important. Guys, you've been amazing. I hope, uh, you know, our attendees, we're up, we're up to 338. Uh, attendees really enjoyed that i think we need to do this again don't we yeah yeah absolutely let's do it we'll, we'll definitely do that change topic a little bit uh but it's you know what we're in a good business we care about what we do you know paul, uh oh can i ask you a question paul 
when yes. you see all these hearts coming up on the side, does that mean they love you? Uh, I thought they were from you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were actually just one very thing. And and to, to, uh, to be fair, uh, we we've done a little bit of campaigning ourselves, haven't we, uh, Ben? We've been standing up a little bit, and we've been getting a bit of abuse from a lot of tenant groups. You're right. <laughs> I mean, I got. I got a coffin and I got a guillotine uh, twittered and I, I've got quite thick skin as a, uh, you know, uh, you know, doing what I do media wise or whatever. Sometimes you've got to be stand up and be counted. And there is a real fine balance within COVID-19. But you know what? We're not a bank. Landlords are not a bank. They can help. I mean, I've heard amazing stories of rent free periods this or whatever. But, you know, if they're going to suspend the eviction period again. Uh, God knows what's going to happen. Sit you know. tight tomorrow evening. All, all, we, all will uh, be revealed tomorrow. Okay. Are we? Do, are Don't we going to march? Going to go? Right. I'm. I'm free tomorrow night. I mean, you're in. You're in France, so I don't know who's going to take place. I'm free to go to Downing Street. <laughs> and I, I might even serve a Section Twenty One notice before it gets banned. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks for your time. I hope you enjoyed it. Keep safe. Bye bye. That's great. Bye, everyone.